All right, well, welcome everybody. Tuesday, May 22nd, meeting of the OSC development team. A few things today. So, as you guys may see, the actual announcement for the boot camp and, and the immersion program is up online. Uh, let me share my screen so I can walk you through some of, some of the latest. And, Jen, if you can take notes as well, please do. And... Let me share my screen. I'm still seeing you only on the uh, Google Doc. You are? Do you still have that yeah. I am not having that problem. Or am I? Okay. Oh, no, no, yes, we are. We are having that problem. File. Uh, Jen, you oh. got to do... Go back to your sharing settings and make sure that you click on Edit. Uh, everybody in the world can edit. Let's see, can I change the sharing settings? Advanced? No, I can't. Uh, Jen, you gotta click on the, still go back to sharing, go to advanced, and then make sure you select everyone can edit. Let me let me continue. Uh, do uh, as Jen does that. Go keep going. So this is the OSC website. Uh, <clears throat> workshops now and Microfactory Bootcamp are live. On workshops, there's things coming up and and um, it's starting to get busy actually. So uh, I'm actually going to do a June second local workshop in Lawrence. It's, not, it's going to be a 3D printer build, but there's basically a, an event there. There's 100 or 200 people coming to that, so, so I got invited uh, for, a, for a talk, and therefore I'll do a, a, a build of the 3D printer that morning on June the 2nd, Lawrence, Kansas. Now, the thing is here, we're doing a few upgrades, so we're introducing the Titan Aero uh, extruder, which is the extruder that's optimized for both rubber and regular printing. Uh, we're going to add the LCD screen so you have extra control, and that's that's it's really nice. The LCD screen is quite nice actually, because it allows you instead of going through the software, you can click all these different things and print and test things right on this little LCD screen. It's pretty nice. So those are the two main main things. Uh, that's for the it's called it's called the 3D printing homestead hoedown. Next, 3D Printer Workshop, University of Oregon, that's June 21st. So anyone who's in Oregon, uh, I believe Jen's going to join and help out, which will be great. She can take a, take a view of what this looks like in real, real life. And then we've got the Open Source Microfactory Boot Camp. If you click on that, that's, I also have the announcement for the full immersion program there. Uh, there's uh, the video which you guys probably have seen. That's all there. And last thing on the on the website is uh, if you look at uh, videos, I actually uh, organize the videos, like pretty much putting up the top video for the year from tw 2018 going back to 2017, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 11, 10, 9, and 8. So videos all the way going back to eight, starting with the initial brick press videos. But take a look at that. It's it's got some of the good videos, kind of like the highlights. You can kind of see how the project is growing through the years and stuff like that. It's pretty good. Uh, last thing on the website is I updated, I blogged uh, for uh, for once here. Um, if you go to the main site, the blog is a is the ten year update post, which I was uh, saying I would do at some point but I pretty much uh, laid that out it's it's a good post I updated the uh, the completion graph for the global village construction set at the bottom so actually if you look at the completion graph 33 percent done about uh, so that's that's where we're at there's four machines and a fifth one fourth that are ready for what you might call productization meaning that people can actually produce them we recommend replication 
and that's the 3D printer, the micro house. Believe it or not, the micro houses that we've done here, including up to the Seed Eco Home, have been proven and worked out that you can take the blueprints as they are right now to replicate. You can do some of the earlier structures, which are just the 12 by 12 square feet ones. Um, and I think the documentation is, it's, it might be a little incomplete, but it's mostly there. There's videos, time lapses, and, and build procedures. For the Seed Eco Home, that complete design is available for anyone who wants to replicate that. Um, and that's a good house. We're uh, going to open up tours on that uh, in a few months. I don't know when, probably in a, in a few months. We don't have that on the schedule yet. Okay, CB Press. That's a machine that's rec rec recommended for replication. The Power Cube is also the one that is cur that currently Abe is refining. The version 17.11 is pretty much ready for production. It's um, the basic design is there. There's maybe like a detail or two that are being updated, but I mean people can with all the copious number of prototypes we've already done, people can pretty much replicate that. And we do recommend that uh, with the recommended version being the one that's the quarter inch CNC cut frame, which is the easiest, fastest to build uh, kind of a version that we're, we're ba basically the power cube at this point is non-structural, like we're not attaching things to it. The frame is separate from the power cube, but that's that's a better way to go because we found out if you make it a, into a structural power cube because it's of the geometrical constraints, it's hard to attach things to it. Uh, that, that's the learning. So we're we're going to, you got a frame, and then you separate separate the engine unit, and that's also more modular because then, if it's non-structural, then you can take it in and out without compromising the structure of of the machine that you're working with, like a tractor. Okay, and next is the micro tractor. Like I'm calling it about 95% because that thing is working well. I've done some work with it. Uh, I actually had the frame actually crack crack in one place from, from one of the things that we did in the workshop that was a hack but actually I'm gonna weld that and get that back up and running um, 95 percent also the CNC circuit mill actually so um, that has been proven to to get very good accuracy re re repeatability of motion down to like half a thousandth of a of an inch so that's good and that, we're gonna do a workshop on that in July but those six um, yeah, I mean, for anybody who's following the project, uh, those are ready for, for production. So, and to make it clear, anyone can take these blueprints and you don't have to ask us. You can just take this and produce this. Economic freedom is part of the open source in that you can produce and make money on these things. So, so that's just for clarity. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's my report. Um, and what's happening right now is actually we're moving the website over to the new server which is our faster Hetzner Hetzner server it's in Germany but we're cutting the wiki over so it's gonna be actually down tomorrow we d couldn't get to it today but Michael is here actually and we're collaborating here he's actually building out another 3d printer here to help out in pre preparation for the the workshop coming up but uh, let's see beyond that uh, we're good to go, so maybe we can have uh, next person report here. So let's see, has that permission been? I'm still seeing view only. Is that? Do we still have the document view only, or? I'm starting over. I'm just going to follow Alexa's notes and set the whole thing up from the beginning. Okay. Because it's somehow because it was it was on my Google, it was in my Google Docs and it doesn't need to be in mine. And I, it wasn't giving me the it wasn't. Edit okay. Let's see what we can do right now. Is I can make a copy right now. No, let me do this right right now so we have it. What someone can do is. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we got to copy it and then just now it's in my folder and then I'll just uh, send you guys the link to that. Yeah, it might be the folder or subfolder that it's in. I think the permissions get more complicated. Not in, in a um, fully shared folder. Yeah, it ended up in, in my docs somehow, and it, this is the first time that's happened. I've been archiving them. I think it's been working. Public and edit, save. Okay, so now this link. Uh, so please see the the text box there. 
that should be editable so um, that is the working link which means that we gotta put that is, is it working for everybody Okay, so Jen, if you wouldn't mind, see if you can now take this document that, that I've shared, which is in the chat box, you can click on that and edit, but please put that on the current meetings page. Um, yeah. Yes. That sounds good. So uh, I actually do have one more thing, and that's that's actually for, for Jen. Uh, one of the things that we do with the 3D printer or just in our work in general is to, like we'd like to get... Um, purchase options where you can buy kits and buy parts for for the for example for the 3d printer so besides the 3d printed parts which someone has to produce and if you go to some printing service that typically is very expensive but that's where having your own printer really helps but the idea is to put this the entire bill of materials as it is into a one-click form that you can get get off a place like Amazon so that uh, someone can purchase all the parts easily now the disadvantage of that is like buying on Amazon in a single quantity it may be a little more expensive but that's the only choice you have if you want to do a one click otherwise you can go to go to like Alibaba and uh, other places like from China that are cheaper but if you want a one click there's a solution that can happen right now through through a thing called kit.com which is uh, a platform that allows you to, to create a shopping basket and then you can do one you can embed that on your website so uh, let me paste that into the the chat box there you can take a look at that kit.com but you can create basically a whole shopping list and then people can buy that so the relevance is that we can facilitate without us having to carry any inventory we can let people buy something online like our whole 3d printer kit which you can get all off for example on Amazon so that that's one way to actually start selling stuff and the way that kit.com can be set up is if OSC for example sets it up then for every sale we get a little cut like three percent for if somebody buys it which is it's not a lot but it's it's uh, if a lot of people are buying that that could add up but in any case, it's a way to, to allow other people to to have access to all the parts without having to go through the, the whole bill of materials, trying to figure it out and, and shop through that. They can do that in one order. So um, what I'd like to ask is if somebody like Jen, <laughs> Jen, maybe you can help out with this, see if you can, you can do that. Um, but the concept is take the existing BOM, which is at... The page on the wiki it's called d3dbom of course d3dbom and there's a spreadsheet there which which is the under the august 12 2017 version let's see am i still sharing my screen no i'm not seeing your screen sure okay on my screen I think I should be sharing it right now um, yeah this is August 12 d3 d BOM page on a wiki so I'll put in the link there but we can convert that instead of someone trying to parse through this this whole spreadsheet which it essentially gets gets you uh, the best ordering option if you're buying like 12 units or so 12 or 24 so what we want to do is uh, take um, take this and convert it to a one-click kit.com buying option meaning that we find everything on Amazon I think kit.com works only with Amazon but Amazon is the so-called the everything store so they they should have every single part that's in this document and it may take some some looking and it may take the fact that like you know like if you're ordering all these individual screws which we typically get from McMaster car and they're relatively inexpensive there it might end up to be quite quite a bit more but what we want to do is we still want to 
avail that option for somebody who, who doesn't mind, pay, mind paying a few extra bucks but they just want to want to click Cause it's, so they're really paying for the speed of ordering because otherwise it would take you maybe an hour or two or a few hours to do all the purchases especially if parts are missing and so forth so the idea with kid.com is that we would post that and then we would maintain it we would we would make sure that uh, check with it you know every week or every month to make sure that all the parts are still available that nothing went out of stock or whatever so there will be some maintenance involved with that but um, we can post that on our, our website so uh, say we go to opensourceecology.org we can have uh, products you know we got our our website it's got about machines workshops microfactory boot camp videos we can have uh, products and then we can actually start posting these these different things and there's one example on this already on uh, the fridge to the, the refrigerator to freezer conversion no freezer to refrigerator conversion which is on the mount best page on the wiki it's uh, let's see let me show you that too there's an example of what this <coughs> kid.com looks like so we already have this, actually one of our guys did that recently the person who did the the conversion of a freezer to a, refri a super efi efficient refrigerator we have that kit actually online already um, so when you click on uh, Amazon bomb there so let me, let me get you that link so if you click on this link so you can see in the chat box you, you can see the the kid.com example where it's in that window there but basically you click on that and 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 you go to that page available it says available at Amazon it takes you to Amazon and then you can let's see what's what's it do you should have a, simply a one click buy button now that still leaves the the 3d printed parts but the way we look at it like if we have a lot of people doing so the idea now is to get to train people to do run workshops and and that, that's the kind of program we're preparing but the the claim is that if somebody learns to run the, the 3d printer workshop they can execute that in one day it's a one-day build so it, ideal it takes five hours it may take more in a, in a day but it's it may be one day of preparation and one day of actually running the workshop so that could be a great part-time job or or something that somebody does with OSC gets paid for it because the economics in there look like you know we're, right now we're charging like 300 above the bill of materials for a participant in one of our workshops so even if two people show up that's like six hundred dollars for that day that could be the absolute minimum where uh, that could actually support somebody doing that now that kid.com is not working for me it's giving me sorry something went wrong here but you get the idea um, Let's see. All right. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, takes you, takes yeah, yeah. yeah, there it is. It takes you to the kid.com page. So, so this is basically buy all on Amazon and it has the whole parts list, every single item. So somebody this was James Wise. He he did this. Uh and here are all the parts. And he even included like a soldering iron. So if you want to solder the little circuit board that's inside of this 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 little device you have that as well so that's a it's a nice way to to do it um, I think it's it could work uh, it's one way to get some e-commerce happening so people have access to if they just want to buy it with a one click so if I click buy on Amazon here that actually does look like it works right there so it gets you that whole list whole spreadsheet there you click continue and then it takes you to basically proceed to checkout hundred twenty dollars for all the items there um, yeah so that's how it looks but um, Jen does that make sense do you think you could do that for the BOM that we have on the wiki there for D3D BOM and convert it to a kid.com instance so so we can order that all online and we can refine that uh, so we can start with refining that copying that spreadsheet refining it so that we have everything that's bought on Amazon because right now the spreadsheet has multiple sources so the first thing is to reduce that all to to Amazon sourcing and then we can go from there 
Um, and that could be relevant for individuals who are buying a single kit or even for workshop organizers like myself. Uh, say I want to, uh, I need another kit, I just go here and instead of spending, say, an hour trying to do all the ordering, I just do the one click. So it's useful for anybody who, in any context. If somebody's just doing one or two workshops or building one or two printers, then it's really going to help a lot. I mean, you know, time's valuable. Definitely. Absolutely. So it's, it's all about getting this streamlined and automated. And the idea is that uh, for people who are running workshops, the idea is you come to our training, you get, get a 3D printer or a little cluster or a couple of 3D printers, and then you can print. Like all the, you know, you just print parts in the background. When you've got all the parts, you're ready for a workshop, and then we can organize it. So that's, that's kind of how it would work. But I think a lot of people can get involved in that. I mean, the question is, the tough part is the training part, which is somebody has to understand both the technology and they have to be a teacher. And I think the teacher part is the harder one. Uh, I think a lot of people can learn the technology faster than they can l learn how to be a good teacher. Teaching is a soft skill. Um, you need to not be pissed off by people. You need to be a nice guy. Uh, you need to know how to communicate effectively. So those are a lot of s soft skills that that somebody would need to do that. But if somebody is comfortable with that, then that would be great. So what I would recommend is people who want to do that is they participate in a workshop, then assist in running a workshop maybe a couple of times or as many times until the point that they feel comfortable they could run their own workshop. And then we can certify them and, and have them run it and we can set them up to doing different different workshops. So that's how it would work. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll cut off there and, and Jen, Jen, do you think you can work on this, this item? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to probably end up with um, like 50 hours this week. Okay. But I think this is something I can do a little bit at a time, especially just doing like the, just changing to the Amazon sourcing. I can do like yeah. 10 minutes at a time, I would hope. Yeah, definitely. So the thing to do would be start a new spreadsheet. So don't, don't, I mean, use that spreadsheet for, for reference but just clone it, copy it, or start a new one from okay, scratch. Yeah. yeah, just start one from scratch or use that as a as a template and start putting in the, all the Amazon items. And then we can continue on that. Yeah, great. So let's move on here. And um, let's do it. Um, so update plus kit.com plus workshops yeah okay um, who would like to go next Abe do you want to report on what you've got uh, this week uh, one one comment on um, on the tractors if we get into that over the weekend I thought about the 64 horsepower version of a tractor which is uh, four power cubes and I figured out how to do three speed on it using uh, valving um, that I was actually quite glad about that because always the controls uh, they can be tricky uh, multiple speeds are pretty important and right now on the live track 6 what I do is I disconnect hoses in order to get like the faster speed or the slower speed but that's that's really impractical that's not not a workable solution so so just by adding some valves into the system you can do uh, three like I figured out how to do three different speeds and that's that's kind of cool just for your reference you can have basically uh, like no special components just simple simple valves that are in series with one another and you can end up the way you, you set them up you, you can end up with multiple speeds um, which is which is interesting so but a do you want to continue yeah Yeah, it's not about that. It's not restricting. It's really that um, one valve. Like the the way it works is, it's once again it's modular. Like you would have a power if it's a four motor, it would be a four motor tractor. So actually not a two motor, but a four motor tractor. But then you have a valve that goes to one motor, but you can have a valve downstream of it, and it can be feeding actually the other other motors and the and if you put an yet another valve downstream 
it would could feed a third motor so you effectively get from this total parallel um, high torque single valve thing to the fact that you're feeding the fluid downhill to another motor downstream to another motor which actually makes it series so you can serialize that circuit by feeding motors downstream and uh, don't want to explain it right now that's you need to have a careful diagram to show how that looks but that's that's the general idea yeah, yeah. Probably, you know what, probably would be, would be good then, so after we've got this finished design that we can put that into a free cut as a workbench where we drag the actual official parts and you can make and modify the power cube to different sizes and shapes. It's probably what... Flamingo, uh, I want to drop more plumbing, like you're 
happened last week into the between the parts and, and the cube. But it looks like Flamingo has a little bit of a learning curve for that, so hopefully I'll get to that as soon as I get more of these adapters finished. I think these parts on the pump are the last two adapters. Um, oh, I think you were saying maybe some of the stuff on the cooler might need to be changed. It doesn't need a quick disconnect. Um, I think some of the plumbing is a little bit different from before because of the different pump. And so the bomb is different, so I'm kind of figuring out some parts of the plumbing still uh, just what needs to be in there because uh, it's going to be different from the previous files. And I think that there were some visual bombs as well, but those, those are uh, going to be different that as well, so a few things to figure out that are new, and I've been updating the, the build materials slowly, but I think it's still missing a few things like some of the adapters. Yeah. On the cooler itself, in order for that to be a... Um, if you can fit the quick couplers there, that would be useful because in terms of a parallel build flow that would be just simply make that cooler assembly you don't have to worry about because uh, the tough thing if you have the fittings that you have to actually connect in like in the front here where it's kind of tight right by the frame I think it's much easier to snap on a quick connector than try to get a wrench in there to actually tighten the two fittings together so it'd be, it would be good from what I see here to have the quick coupler on the cooler itself and that's one of our normal half inch quick couplers because that's that I think is just needs the which can handle 12 gallons per minute which is fine because the pump pump should be doing about nine gallons per minute if we have uh, I looked at the pump that we were using the one we're using right now in the micro track is 0.61 cubic inch which is about nine gallons per minute uh, so yeah, those half-inch quick couplers would be good for that. But yeah, I, I think we should, because um, for the build procedure and any maintenance, you can just take those hoses right off, which would be good. Okay, I think in the bomb, which I took from 1710 for 1711, it says the pump is 14 gallons a minute. No, and no, too big. 0.92 model, too big? Okay, too so big. Uh, too big because that was that was good for the 27 horsepower power cube and uh, you can use it. It will have higher higher flow at lower pressure. You might you won't get 3,000 psi out of that. You might get maybe 2,000 at most. Uh, it would work. It has higher flow, but it's too fast for the tractor, and we need more torque. So we need lower speed and more torque. That's it's an option that we can use it. But the the I think the form factor of both of those pumps is I think identical. Like whether it's like one cubic inch or, or like 0.6 cubic inch, I think they they look identical. I think, and you can check that. But well, so. the pump that was used for 1710, right? For the micro track, I think that was 17 power cube 1710. Um, Oh, uh, let's see if we. Yeah, Power Cube version 711. Let's take a look at that real quick. And that bomb there. Yeah, no, that that needs to. That was good for what we started with, but we since then we've gone to. So I can make a note there. Um, latest micro track pump is 0.6. The one cr that's current that I'm using right now is 0.61 cubic inch, which is about nine gallons per minute. I think it's actually 9.5 gallons per minute. That's what we have right now. Uh, but that's that doesn't affect the CAD, it does affect the sourcing. Because okay. the, the outlets, I think they're the same yeah. even on the pumps. Okay, they look the same. Yeah. Um, 
you it's still at surplus center if you go to surplus center like you see that you got this this one looks like that we typically want we like the the spine shaft because you just slip it in you don't have to put any kind of a set screw on it uh, but we probably want to go instead of this 0.92 you see like how say you go to surplus center these are all the same they actually look all the same but they're different volumes a search. Yeah. yeah like this 0.61 here which is what I actually what we got with the spline that would be let's see how does it look compared to the point yeah I mean they, they all look pretty much the same they I think they're identical size they, they just changed the insides of them yeah Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll see if it's, um, I see they have different port options too. Right, um, uh, what we want is... SE port sizes are the similar. Uh, ports are, uh, I think, typically same. What's different is the clockwise versus counterclockwise, spline versus keyed shafts. Yeah. So they should yeah, have... The same, same body with different internals. Right. Yeah, yeah. They got four var varieties for for each, and the difference is typically spline versus non, clockwise versus counterclockwise. Okay, so I see a I see a point six one cubic. Right. That's that's one of them that. There. Yeah, we got to get the right one. I think it's forget if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, but it's the same same direction as in the BOM. Okay. Um, Abe, what else? What else we got? I gotta get going here because we're, okay. we're doing the migration on the wiki uh, prep for that. Um, oh. What else? What else yeah, you what, got? What time are the, is the wiki going down? Is so we're gonna down probably to take it down that. tomorrow. We're not gonna do it today because oh. today we're gonna go over verifying that everything works, and then we're gonna migrate it tomorrow. So. Um, so today's yeah, wiki should be good. I think left on the power cube. I think I got a lot of the plumbing fittings constrained the way I went in there. Um, yeah, that looks good. Looks good in the cat or in the cooler and everything. Mm -hmm. um, everything was constrained easy. And I've got it where I can edit it pretty easy with the frame. And a friend has linked in, uh, I said before, the, the way the assembly to work bench is updating the frame was pretty easy to edit, and the constraints didn't get messed up, so yeah. it worked better. Um, I think I got all the ball valves the right size. Um, so get bolts in there, but um, I think these two fittings on the pump are the last two there, and there may be some stuff around the cooler, and I guess I need to draw, well, somebody else has drawn, uh, quick disconnects, so I need to draw those in. Uh, there's probably two different sizes of those, I guess. That's a quick yeah. disconnect. If you look at my screen, that's a quick disconnect. That's the male and yeah. female part. Okay. If they are, if you can sp spread them, split them apart, they probably we probably have the source file where that's in two pieces. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of uh, yeah. The original cooler file had uh, a, a compound of parts on that, so it all separates. Um, so mm-hmm. Right. So, let's see, I guess it clamps, clamps on the suction line, and then, let's see, there's a quick disconnect on the inlet, though, I think, right? It's not clamped on. Uh, no, there. no, the inlet is just another barb. The oh, outlet okay. is a quick oh. connect, and, okay. yeah. Yeah, outlet is quick connect because you want to connect whatever you like to this power cube. You want to disconnect it. But inlet, you've got the tank, so you don't need to 
that just goes on. You you typically don't disconnect it until you until you have to do maintenance or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's some stuff on the concept. Uh, what's it called? The power cube conceptual conceptual design page on the wiki. But there, there's a few things there that start to be clarified more. Um, but I, I've edited a few things in there. But yeah. 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 Sounds good. Um, yeah. So thank you. That's good work. Keep going at it, and and we'll continue on that. So I've been thinking a lot about water these days because uh, we had a little bit of rain here, but for over the last year we didn't have a lot of rain. So it's Literally, if you have a pond on a site, you're probably getting 10 times more growth. Like if you trap all the water versus it running all down during the rain and just running downhill and down the river, if you trap that, I mean, yeah, you definitely get a lot more yeah. water. So that's where a bulldozer yeah. comes in to make all the dams and do the key lines oh, here. Um, yeah, if you're doing key lines because you don't have enough slope for swales probably, right? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good stuff. So, okay, let's continue. So, who else we got? So, Ruslan, do you have uh, an update? Uh-huh. Yeah. Socialization? Sustainability. Sustainability, yeah. That's right. Um, and uh, he will uh, suggest me uh, later some books uh, from this um, area um, about uh, pedagogic teaching. Yeah, yep. Mm hmm. There's a uh, the only thing I can recommend about teaching is there's a good book here by peop the people who founded the Acton Academy, which is a which is a private. It's actually a private school f up to high school. Uh, their book is called The Courage to Grow. No, The Courage to Grow or Courage to Learn. Let's see, what is it called? Courage to Grow. It's called Courage to Grow. It's a very nice book but in it it has actually a bunch of uh, very top some top pedagogical books like everything from like about the say the Khan Academy and other things and about how people learn how people uh, yeah how people think and learn so there's a lot of there's they got a like a required reading list of like 10 or 20 books there that it's it's worth looking it's uh there's a page on a wiki called Courage to Grow. It, it lists some of those those books in there. Okay. It's more uh, scientific or popular or motivating? This is um, enterprise, so it's motivation, but the the stuff behind it... No, it's popular. It's more like the popular. Like, for example, 
Salman Khan's book on the one world schoolhouse I mean that's a popular treatment it's not like scientific papers but but some of that some of the books they're, they're pretty rigorous uh, a lot of the books in there are quite good so yeah yeah sounds good Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Um, courage to grow, and yeah. So I think anybody else, or that's that's all we've got for the meeting today looks like um, yeah yeah so yeah so let's wrap up here that's good and we'll get to the the wiki migration here and yesterday we actually set up maybe I can wrap up with like this some security issues um, courage to grow um, I'm just putting a link to courage to grow from Amazon so you can take a look at that um, I did read that book. It's a great book. It's uh, it's one of those things where how do you how do you teach? It's it's literally the thing that's that's surprising to me about it is in Acton Academy they give so much responsibility to the kids. In other words, make them so independent they they make them think on their own. So it's like uh, you might have heard of the Lord of the Flies, right? That's a famous book, well known book. It talks about how turn things turn to chaos when you get a bunch of kids or people who are not mature. In a certain situation but but Acton Academy is able to avoid that chaos while giving kids a lot of responsibility and that's kind of a common theme how do you get a lot of responsibility to people without that thing turning into chaos that's a, and they seem to have uh, done pretty well on addressing that issue okay but uh, let's wrap up here so just one more thing about security so yesterday we set up um, just to let you know how OSE like how we're keeping track of passwords uh, so so Michael so he's a cryptographer. Uh, he did that and he studied that in, in college too. But he's our system admin. And our current strategy is to use KeePass. It's K-E-E-P-A-S-S. -E -E -S. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's basically a, a password safe where you put in all your passwords. And the idea there is, um, so how do you log into all different sensitive areas? What, what we decided to do is do, to do a... Uh, everything is backed up like we have backups of the key pass password file the password file is encrypted um, it's secure and it's accessible by a, a very strong password so the surprising thing about passwords is uh, so what I learned yesterday was that it doesn't really matter like how many like weird characters you have like uppercase lowercase the much more important thing is the the length of the password so the the recommendation from Michael which which we used was um, instead of having some crazy password that you cannot remember do something that's a bunch of words strung together that are words that you can remember easily and as long as it has 20 or more letters then that's really good and very secure so one thing that uh, Michael mentioned that Snowden uses, uh, or like a, what, what would be a good password? Uh, for example, something crazy like Margaret Thatcher is 100% sexy, you know, things like that. Uh, crazy things that you can remember that still are easy, you know, you, you might think that you can guess that somehow because it makes sense to humans, but the length of the password is what makes it very strong. So, so that kind of password is some sentence or some bunch of words that you can remember uh, so actually, what I did is I selected a thing that I remember from a very, very long time ago that will never leave my mind. Because cause, uh, if you forget that password, you can be in trouble uh, if you're keeping all your all your keys or all your passwords in one file. So that's what we're doing. Um, but that's good because from now on, like I, I, I think I've been liberated a little bit because what I'll do is any password I go to 
online anywhere uh, I'll just generate a crazy long password using KeePass use that and save that in KeePass and then allow KeePass just basically copy and paste there's a way you copy and paste from KeePass so, so when you're logging in you you don't even have to look at what the password is because because KeePass is is keeping it all for you so as long as you have KeePass on your on your computer then that's good and the key pass itself is protected by it by a very secure password yeah go ahead uh, there is an open hardware uh, project multipass uh huh is that a that's a piece of hardware yes this is a piece of hardware uh huh because Uh-huh. How does that work? So the security there is it's a pin it's a it's basically by a pin and what, there's a card that you put into that too or or that is the card Yeah, you can take a look at that. Um, yeah, no, that's good. As open as possible, and if you still use proprietary chips, mm -hmm. uh, on Admel, I suppose. But uh, yeah. the main part of the software is uh, open source. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Michael what he thinks of that, if he's considered that. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Okay. Do you have one of those? I have three of those. Oh yeah. So do you like them? Um, they're okay. I, I have uh, some problem with USB cable, but uh, generally it's uh, very convenient to use them. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. I'll watch that video there. Okay. Yeah, the quality of the hardware. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's. Can we actually, um, do they have plans of how to build one of these? They have design designs online? Yes. That's good. We might we might start doing it with our circuit mill. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's wrap up here because I got to get going on my side here. That's good. Perfectly on time here. So, yeah, uh, we'll continue going and, uh, you know, talk to people about this idea of, people running workshops and how to how more people can get involved because uh, for 3d printing I mean the market of course is huge for one for practical parts and on a second part for libraries and high schools science classes that they can be all prototyping things um, if you haven't read the open source everything store the I, big, big idea well there's a, there is a big idea and that is with the CNC circuit mill 3d printer little laser cutter and a filament maker 
can be taking scrap plastic and produce perhaps use also using common off-the-shelf parts produce probably 80 percent of the consumer goods out there pending that you have actually really good designs for how to do that and i think the the weak link right now is is a lot of really excellent designs like for example there's this really good 600 watt uh electric motor out there that's 3d printed but it's not exactly open source but things like that if you get really high quality things that are open source then many more people can produce that and reinvent production within communities and open source micro factories okay but with that said yeah let's um let's quit here and we'll see you guys next week with the migrated wiki so you should should see some performance increase on a wiki and we'll see how that works and uh we'll talk to you next week then thanks a lot guys